Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I'm going to showcase how we can relatively simply, using AWS, start a server, using EC2 specifically. And on this server, I'm just going to put a pretty, pretty simple Python endpoint, allowing us to showcase the full path of creating an EC2 server, putting a endpoint on the server, and exposing it using the IP, IP provided by AWS for that specific server. And just very quickly, first, this is the Python endpoint I will be exposing. So very simply using Flask, just create a simple Flask application, sets a base route on dash, printing hello world. So if I go to localhost on port 5000, we get hello world. Pretty simple. And this is then what we're going to put on our EC2. I have also created slash generated a guide, kind of readme guide, which is going to be part of a repository, which I'll link in the description, where you can kind of get a bit more thorough description. And I'm actually going to be using the commands from in here just to help guide me through this process as there is a bit of setup. But if we then start inside AWS, we need to go into the EC2 area, either if you're recently visited. It would be on this list, otherwise you would need to search for it. And as this is a pretty new account I have just created, there's nothing really running here. But I'll then go into instances running, allowing me to launch a new instance. And just quickly worth mentioning, I am on a specific server or kind of like region. Because I'm in the Nordics, I'm using Europe Stockholm. But just worth noting, if you add stuff and it's suddenly gone, next time you enter, you might have been thrown onto a different region and you just need to go back by simply just clicking on whatever region you want to be on. So to then launch an instance, we simply click the launch instance button up here. We can give it a name. I'm just going to call it a simple endpoint. The name doesn't matter. We then need to choose like the operating system or the base setup we want to build it from. So you could already have like a previously created instance with a bunch of setup, you could turn this setup into an AMI, which is kind of like an image of this previous version, and then kind of like rebuild multiple servers from kind of like a base template. But for now, I'm just going to be using Amazon Linux, as it's free. You could use stuff like Ubuntu, which I think also have a free version, but Amazon Linux is more lightweight. So I'm just going to stick with Amazon Linux. And I'm just going to be using the newest version, which for now is Amazon Linux 2023. We then need to use kind of like the hardware it's going to be running on. And again, it's just a simple setup, so it doesn't really matter as much for a simple endpoint. So I'm just going to stick with the free tier, the T3 Micro, providing two virtual CPUs, one gig memory. And you can see the prices when you extend. But if you just created your new Amazon account, you're going to have a bunch of free tiers, so most of this is going to be free for quite a while. And let's hope this loading is not going to cause any issues. But otherwise, to then actually be able to connect to our Amazon server, Amazon Linux server, we need to, or we should have a key pair login, so you can avoid it. But I actually very much prefer to have a private key we need to pass when we are later on going to be connecting with SSH. So I would quickly just create a new key pair name. I'm just going to call it my symbol key and do it for .pem, create key pair. And note, we then download. If we then look at the file we just have downloaded, we can see here that we have a simple key.pem and it's going to contain like a private key, which we then need to pass using our SSH to actually be able to connect to our server. So let's just keep that in mind for now. And we're just going to continue through our network settings. And we're going to have a pretty basic setup. We can modify all of this afterwards. But for now, let's just keep in mind that we allow SSH from anywhere. Getting it even more secure, you can choose to use your own IP to be the only access point. But from now, I'm just going to keep it at anywhere. And I'm then simply going to allow both HTTP and HTTPS. I think it's just going to be HTTP. So let's actually just do HTTP. And again, it's kind of telling us that we are allowing from everywhere, which is not the most safest, but that's fine. 
and storage 8 gigabyte is going to be more than enough for this so that should be our setup so now we can click launch instance and if we then give it a few seconds we should see that it have successfully launched the instance I can now go back into my instance area and see that we have now a pending simple endpoint instance and it's now running to then connect. If we connect, it's kind of suggesting us that, oh, we should use SSH and we should pass it to the, the position of our simple key.pem. And because I am on Linux, or not on Linux, I'm on Windows, I'm going to be using subsystems for Linux and Windows, meaning I have a Ubuntu environment running on my Windows computer. And we can see here I already have like some other small PEM files where I have previously been uh, playing and connecting to some AWS stuff. But just very quickly, I would just open like VS Code for this position. You can see this is the Visual Studio code. But this position showcasing me all the setup, all the like local Linux setup. And I will then take our small key PEM file we had earlier and just drag it into this position. And you can see it here. Which then allow me now from my Linux area to have my small key.pem. And apparently a small key.pem zone identifier. But it should then allow me to actually just copy this SSH saying from my current position, connect to my small key.pem file and connect to my EC2 we just created. And it's kind of like also inputting most of the important stuff here of the, the IP for the EC2. So, and I need to do sudo actually. And I need to pass it my password. And because it's the first time it's telling me, are you sure you want to connect to this one? So I'm just going to say, yes, I'm sure. And we now have direct access to our EC2 instance. And we see in here it's actually just empty, but it is just a Linux environment. And for example, what we then want to do is actually we want to install some of the things that we need to install to run our Flask endpoint in this case. So going through again my lists here, my, my path, I would first, because we're going to be using yum on a Linux environment, so first we just try to update, but because it just created everything, it's kind of like up to date. We were then using yum to install Python 3 with pip, allowing us to actually run our flask. Or well, first we need to install Python and pip, and then we need to install flask using pip 3 as our actual library we're going to be using for our process in this case. So as you can see, pretty simple. I should then have nano pre-installed on Linux environments, Ubuntu Linux environments. And if you don't know, nano is kind of like a notepad for Linux environments. So what we can simply do is in my guide, we go right into like creating a new directory. Let's, oh, let's actually do it to be a bit more formal. Like this, so we create a Flask app folder. We can cd, so change directory into the Flask app. In here, I would then nano, and then a name of a file. So when I nano, and then a name of a file that doesn't exist in my current position, it's going to be creating that file. And then we're going to just simply copy paste. And then we're just simply going to copy paste our basic endpoint. And note, I actually just made a mistake when copying in. Because when just running it locally, it doesn't matter which like port it's running on or kind of like which host. But it's very important that we need to define that a post is on local host by adding it inside the run for our Flask application like this. Because it then will enforce that when we then run this Flask application that is actually going to be running on the like local host on the machine, allowing us to then hit the endpoint from any source. So if we now save this, control S, control X, and we can then see the public IP, because every time you start, remember every time you start and stop, an EC2 is gonna re-establish or kind of be given public IP. So we could be able to look at this one and then port 5000, but we first actually need to do, as I didn't think before earlier when we were looking at the security group, 
can see here that it's allowing connection on port 22, which is the SSH port, and I was allowing it to connect on port 80 for the HTTP, but I forgot that we were not actually going to do any redirection to port 80. We could probably in the Flask relatively simply force it to do port 80, but it actually do a bit more modification from here. So I would click on this LaunchVisat1 security group, which is the one defining what can be accessed on the EC2 connected to the security group, which is the EC2 we just created. So if we then edit the inbound rules and add a rule and do a custom TCP and then allow access on port 5000 and we do from anywhere, and we now save our rules and we can then see we have the file here. If we then simply then do Python 3 on our app.py, we can see that it's going to be running both like locally on inside the server, but also running on the public IP of the server on port 5000. So now if we just go to any browser and we put in the public IP, which you can see here inside the instances as well, we saw it just right here. So if I actually just click on this one, we can see that it opens a new tab. It should then, if we give it a few seconds, if it's actually the right, no, that's actually the wrong public IP. If we actually give it the right public IP, there we go. Then we get hello world, meaning we now have a full connection from our EC2, where we then accessed it through our SSH, added our Flask application, ran our basic Flask application. And again, importantly, that we on site inside our security group, changed and allowed it to run on or be accessible on port 5000. But that is the basic setup of how we would create our basic AC2 on AWS, use Amazon Linux, connect using SSH, add a very, very basic application, run the basic application, and utilizing security groups to ensure that the endpoints from our application could be accessed. So if you enjoyed this showcase, please leave like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.